Whoa, with Yang and Yang Gang. If you haven't had the opportunity to see Andrew Yang on his last interview on A. B, C, after he did his debates, I think Andrew Yang is ending the year off with a bang. Even though they tried to pick and trying to find a weak spot in Andrew Yang's foundation of his policies. Well, this is your boy Triple Cup Chuck. We about to break this here down. Dad. Whoa, what's good with your YouTube and YouTube bus? It's your boy Triple Cup Chuck and I'm up. And appreciate you coming rock with me, like, sharing, and subscribing. And if you have an opinion about the situation that's going on, leave a comment below. I'm going to read it. Because when you comment, our collective minds put together, we bring synergy. This how we starting the video off? Candidate of color on this stage. Fewer than 5% of Americans donate to political campaigns. You know what you need to donate to political campaigns? Disposable income. I guarantee if we had a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month, I would not be the only candidate of color on this stage tonight. That was Andrew Yang at the final presidential debate of 2019, making his pitch for his universal basic income plan. The tech entrepreneur has been the surprise breakthrough candidate of 2020. A dozen governors, mayors, and members of Congress have already dropped out, but Yang is still there, one of just seven to qualify for that last debate. Andrew Yang joins me live right now. Thank you for joining us, uh, sir. I wanna, I wanna start with your campaign slogan. It is not left, not right, but forward. What, what does that mean? Well, John, to me, it's clear the reason why Donald Trump is our president today is that we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs that were primarily based in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Iowa, the swing states he needed to win. And what we did to those jobs, we are now going to do to the retail jobs, the call center jobs, the fast food jobs, and eventually the truck driving jobs. We have to have a new way forward that works for all Americans, independent of your political affiliation. So that's what I mean by not left, not right, forward. These problems are technological and apply to us all. So are you saying that the Democratic Party has been too tied to the left, has been too ideological? while the Republicans too far to the right. I mean, is that what you're saying? Yo, is it me or do I sense a little hostility? It's almost like he's trying to say Andrew Yang is not for the people that's left, the Democrats, and he's not for the people right that's Republicans. But in actionality, Andrew Yang is trying to say he's not dedicated to no left or right. He's dedicated to forward. That's all people. So Republicans and Democrats alike, humanity first. Uh, I was an ambassador in the Obama administration, uh, but to me, Democrats still have not asked themselves the hard questions as to how Donald Trump won in 2016. Where if you look around the country, you see 30% of stores and malls closing, you see record high levels of stress, financial insecurity, student loan debt, even suicides and drug overdoses. These are the problems that voters talk to me about when I'm out there every single day. And the Democratic Party, unfortunately, is acting like Donald Trump is the cause of all of our problems. He's a symptom, and we need to cure the underlying disease. Now, that is a presidential comeback. So I want to talk about your freedom dividend, $1,000 a month for everybody over 18. And it's everybody. Who don't like money? How are you going to find a way to talk shit about stimulating the community? Everybody who, who opts in gets the freedom dividend. Uh, why... Do you provide $1,000 to somebody like Jeff Bezos or, for that matter, Donald Trump? I mean, math. They don't need it. Check this shit out. He picking and trying to find a way to debunk UBI. This plane's already been very expensive. <laughs> well, I'm glad you noticed the math. Uh, yes. pain. It stands for Make America Think Harder. <laughs> and my freedom dividend is based upon the petroleum dividend that's been in effect in Alaska for almost 40 years. Everyone in Alaska is getting between one and two thousand dollars a year, no questions asked, and that's the richest Alaskan and the poorest. And what this does is it universalizes it and makes it popular. There's no stigma attached to it. There's no you get it, I don't. And my way to pay for this is by taking a toll from every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad. So we'd be getting hundreds of millions, even billions from Jeff Bezos. So if we try and send him $1,000 a month to remind him he's an American, it's essentially immaterial. Okay, I want to turn to your health care plan. You've just released a, a, a new health care plan, and I'm a little bit confused about where you stand. First, I, I want to play uh, clips from two of your ads where you talk about health care.
We need to move towards a Medicare for All system where every American has access to quality and affordable services. His ideas are a blueprint for a new way forward. A health care system with Medicare for All. But I've looked at your health care plan. In fact, I, I've got it right here. And this plan does not call for Medicare for All. In fact, it, it doesn't even have a public option. So wh wh why the dissonance here? He got to be trolling because there's no way possible he don't understand Andrew Yang's Medicare for All plan. We need to move towards universal health care that's high quality uh, and nearly cost free for Americans around the country. But reality is we have millions of Americans who are on private insurance right now and taking those plans away from them very quickly would be untenable for many, many Americans. To me, the goal of the government has to be to demonstrate that we can outcompete private plans and then push them out of the market over time. But and that's and that's common sense. It's like the show me state. Show me what you got first. Let me test the goods out. If it's good, then I will come. But, but, that, but, that's but, what we're but, proposing. But, but I'm, again, I'm confused. Your, your ad is explicit. Your ad says Medicare for all. Your plan is not Medicare for all. It's not even Medicare for some because in your plan, there's, there, there's not even a public option. Our plan is to expand a universal health care system to all Americans. Medicare for all is not the name of a bill. Medicare for all well, is universal health care for all Americans. But Medicare for all is Medicare for all, right? I mean... Well, our, our health care plan would be, would be based on Medicare and expanding it over time uh, to more and more Americans. You lower the eligibility age and then you make it widely accessible. Okay, let's think about Medicaid for all in the same context as UBI. You can opt in. So if you have a job that you like, your uh, Medicaid and your health care, you can stay with it. But Andrew Yang is trying to say we could do it on a grander scale. And if you like what we're doing, you could actually hop in. That'll keep you from saying, oh, you just stripping away my health care, the one that I pay for, the one that I already have. This way, it could be beneficial for the people that don't have Medicaid and then the people that actually have Medicaid for themselves. So if you don't have Medicaid, you could get in. But if you already have it, you can keep what you have. And then when you're ready to come over, because you might be skeptical at first and you say, I like what I have. And then when you say, OK, the government is doing an excellent job, then you want to hop over. That's what Andrew Yang is trying to say. How he cannot understand it? Continue. Okay, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't see that in, in, in your plan, but, um, but I, I want to move forward to um, the, the, the question uh, of, of your campaign. So you have, as we've established, you have been the surprise breakthrough candidate. Nobody expected you were going to still be here. You're going to be on that debate stage, just one of seven. But you've never really broken five percent in any poll in those in those early states. What, what do you have to do to actually break through to the next level? Well, John, I certainly love being described as a surprise breakthrough. Uh, that, that seems very positive. And you and I both know they ha there hasn't been a poll in the early states in over a month. I can't wait for some new polls to come out that show how much we're growing, how much the energy and enthusiasm and the crowds are getting bigger every time I go to any of the early states. I'm on my way to New Hampshire a little bit later today to celebrate New Year's Eve. And you're going to see when the polls come out, we'll be at 5% or higher, I think significantly higher. Okay, and you've had some interesting statements on, on impeachment. Uh, you say, first of all, nobody ever asks you about it out on the trail. You've suggested Democrats have spent too much time uh, uh, talking about it, uh, but you support the impeachment of Donald Trump, correct? Yes, I do support the impeachment process, but voters don't ask me about impeachment. They ask me about health care and child care and education and climate change. And the fact is we need 20 Republican senators to have a change of heart or a change of mind in order for impeachment to be successful. So this strikes many Americans like a ball game where you know what the score is going to be. And until that changes, to me, we need to be focused much more on presenting a new and positive vision that Americans will get excited about. That's how so, we win in 2020. So what's your advice for Democrats? Should they forego a Senate trial? I mean, if this is a ball game where you already know the final score and they're gonna spend, it could be the better part of a month, maybe longer on a trial on all these issues that you say voters don't care about, uh, should they just forego the Senate trial? I mean, they've impeached It them. almost sounds like he acts well, as we, Andrew well, Yang, the him, first and if you're going to person have the trial, to not run on Democrat or Republican is about the people. I've already said that 
I think that Andrew Yang the is the only candidate that could please the both sides. Uh, Senator Warren and Sanders and Booker and it almost uh, sounds uh, like he's saying Andrew Yang he's not on the side of the Democrats or he's not on the, the side of the Republicans. The he's on the side with the people. We uh, have an election to win later this year in a case to make for the American people. And you've suggested that you would be open to pardoning Donald Trump if you were elected. Is, is, is that is that would you do you, do you think that there should be a a pardon issued? For Donald Trump, by whoever that wins the Demo if, if a Democrat wins in November, my focus is on solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected and moving the country forward. And if you look around the world, unfortunately, it's developing countries that have fallen into a pattern of the new president or the new leader uh, prosecuting and sometimes imprisoning the former leader. That's not. Uh, a precedent that's been set here in the U.S., and to me, that's something that I would be interested in maintaining. It, so, it's so, not so, so, in so the you, country's so interest would, necessarily to, to, to look backwards. We need to look forwards. So you would not want to proceed with prosecuting Donald Trump after he left office, and you would be open to a pardon, or you think he should well, be pardoned? We would have to see what the facts were. We'd have to see what uh, what the charges were and what the attorney general advises, but my interest is in moving the country forward. All right, Andrew Yang, thank you for joining us here on This Week. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Happy Holidays.